historical documentary collection in the Paris School of Urban Planning. Uh, first, this collection in Paris uh, was created uh, from an accumulation of documents, reports, uh, administrative and uh, educational files from the ancient uh, Paris Institute of Urban Planning, created uh, exactly a century ago, uh, after the First World War. It is now called the Bibliothèque Poète et Célier, with the name of the two founders of the education and training in art planning in France. Uh, this commitment, my commitment in this uh, <coughs> management is uh, twofold. Uh, first, to preserve uh, historical documentation in the training school for uh, tomorrow's uh, urban planners, my students. And uh, it is not uh, easy because in France, as uh, elsewhere, town planners are paid to prepare the future and uh, must uh, to look too much uh, at the past is, is, uh, is difficult. <laughs> uh, but um, it still uh, seems important to me that urban uh, planners control their technique and professional memory as uh, architects or engineers. After many years, uh, this very opportunistic and ideologic argument is understood by the authorities of the university. The new director is German, <laughs> uh, understand it uh, better than the other. <laughs> um, so the second uh, commitment is uh, to remove the ambiguity between uh, um, and the uh, collection and transform this collection into a library which means uh, that we have transmitted the archives, uh, defini definited, uh, like uh, unprinted uh, documents to the competent institutions in France, uh, Archive Departemental, Archive National. Uh, Josefina uh, uh, showed us yesterday um, that she's doing the same with the documents of the Pueblos de Colonisation in the uh, library of the um, School of Architecture in Valladolid. Finally, uh, in Paris, um, this um, historic town planning library had to find its place between the public archives and the uh, more general university libraries, the specialist libraries in all documentation center in the university, in the, in the town planning school, the urban planning school. But it remains very special, uh, however, because it uh, passes alongside uh, classical books, but uh, very numerous reports of administrative and technical literature, which are not well preserved either in libraries or in public art archives. We call it, uh, in French, grey literature. And uh, we have a very big problem in, in France to the conservation of uh, grey literature, uh, literature. Administrative literature. Uh, now, my uh, research uh, experience. <laughs> Apparently, uh, the archives of uh, urban planning exist. Uh, these are, for example, the plans, projects, and all the documents produced by the specialist state uh, surveys, uh, which were organized uh, in all European countries in the 20th century. This production is very characteristic of uh, uh, a century that has made urban planning a major area of collective action. And this is an essential uh, observation to uh, our uh, program, uh, Urban East, of course. And we have seen it uh, with you, Bertrando, with uh, Italian cities, Bergamo, Bologna, or in this exhibition with, uh, about Valladolid and uh, uh, all the plans of uh, Valladolid. But I would like to say 
uh, today to the young researchers uh, who are here. <laughs> Uh, we must uh, also adopt uh, the very comfortable evidence of this notion of urban planning archive. Uh, this means don't limit research to these documents. It's very important. Why? First of all, these documents are uh, scattered. It is impossible to unify they in one institution or center. For example, we have uh, the archive of the state, regional, local, and so on. A lot of, and a lot and a lot of institutions produce urban planning archives. And behind uh, an apparent institution, there are other institutions more discreet, but uh, very important. Uh, they leave uh, fewer written traces, but a lot of heritage in the city as uh, it is built. We have seen it yesterday with uh, Josefina, with the example of the Instituto Nacional de la Colonización and the Sindicato de Logar. Uh, it is important uh, to say that um, dictatorships uh, do not have the monopoly of the propaganda. <coughs> From its origin, for example, the Guardian City model, town planning is based about uh, on communication and propaganda. And this is in the more democratic regimes in the early 20th century, in Grand France, Belgium, and so on. These documents are very, very present in the urban planning archive and generally at the expense, or sometimes at the expense, of what is happening in the reality of neighborhoods, cities, and territories. The great uh, sociologist uh, Maurice Alvax, at the beginning of the 20th century, thought that in the transformation of Paris in the 19th century, the written documents were produced to hide the real practice and the real urban movement. As a Marxist, he contrasted, uh, in a way, the superstructure of plans, projects, and discourse with the infrastructure of urban transformation, urban society, economic realities. Osman was necessarily a liar. Osman era un mentiroso, y no podía ser otra cosa. It's a very radical position, of course, applied in this time, uh, in, uh, in this uh, 19th century, where uh, there are not officially urbanists. <laughs> but uh, it has always been very useful to me to criticize what urban planners say about their action in all the 20th century. It's important to not believe them a priori and to consider that the plans and projects which constitute, which constitute the heart of the uh, urban planning archive have a very complex relationships with reality, like all the representations. In my opinion, in my opinion these relationships these relationship uh, between realities and projects is the real object of the history of urban planning. So, what can we do? Quite simply, white the historians recommended, cross-referencing, confronting, cross-checking the urban planning archive with other archives. That of housing and development, property, politics, environment, testimonies of ordinary people, including urban morphology, architecture, landscape, traces, which constitute another type of archive. Conclu conclusion, uh, it is uh, therefore important that archive uh, centers identify urban planning archive, but uh, this cannot be sufficient to researchers who will always have to go and find other documents. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you uh, our experience in building 
uh, special uh, uh, spatial uh, infrastructure as a tool for regional and rural life. Uh, this was a subject I used to speak a lot maybe uh, 15 years to 10 years ago because then we were at the forefront of this uh, task in, in Spain and that's why and that's because, because of our particular geographical features, especially namely our uh, administrative fragmentation. You shall see. Uh, well, that's, I suppose you know we are there at the southwest corner of Europe. Uh, I show this map usually because we lack the region, we lack the coastline, so people get lost if I show just the regional map. You can see now, that's the, that's the focus. Uh, in, in the north part of Spain, Portugal uh, to the left. And you can see now that uh, it's a very big region in uh, European context. It's bigger than most of European countries like Austria, Denmark, Hungary, uh, with few people, just half, two million and a half people. But above everything for today's purpose, it is composed of 2,248 uh, municipal councils. And under Spanish law, each of them, each one of them, is a planning authority. Uh, as a comparison, uh, in the Republic of Ireland, which is slightly smaller, there are 88 planning authorities. We have 2,200. Uh, I am prone to talk about this uh, subject very much, about its historical roots and its current implications, but today we are speaking about the archives and just this is a given situation. This is a situation we have to deal with. And it results, as count, we have uh, 1,450 local plans in force, around <coughs> 6,000 detailed plans, and several thousand of related documents. So there's a mountain of planning information. Of course, it's highly unfortunate. But I'm speaking of that. I just have to make all these plans available on the internet without significant delay and with legal certainty. And of course, I, I always mm, speak in, of this uh, subject from a bi biographical point of view because uh, it was, uh, it is, we started at 1991 when I was a freshman of 27 and I <laughs> had to uh, take in my arms a high pile of plans, of plans in, in paper take it to the digitalization process. Well, um, now we have got a fully operative plan information system, which is constantly updated. And, yes, constantly updated. Both for adopted plans and for those in the process of adoption. And these are the main elements of the system. We are talking specifically of the second three. First, very quickly, norms are the first <coughs> elements of the system. I mean, regional plan acts and regulation that makes compulsory to upload uh, plan information, especially during the, the process of public consultation prior to the adoption of, of any plan. And nowadays, that's, it's all that obvious, but it was not so much 21 years ago. And also, it may seem superfluous if you are work with 88 planning authorities because you can round them all in this hall and explain what they must do. Again, if you deal with 2,000 planning authorities, you have to make regulation acts and so on and so on. Well, very quickly, the second and third part of this element deal with the objective of making planning as homogeneous as possible from the formal point of view to make it easy to work. Uh, a common planner and architect uh, engineers have to work with lots of plans because there is a plan for every building. So as they uh, must be as homogeneous as possible. So there is the IT plan is a, is a regulatory regulation, a specific regulation. I mean to standardize planning. I mean, well, it's formal aspects like acronyms, like uh, like symbols, like colors, files, and the numbers, the numbers, uh, the names of the documents, uh, and the formats, and so on. That must be homogeneous in all the plans that are adopted in this region. So that helps the understanding. If you are familiar with what one plan, you get familiar easily with the plan of the village of the city, uh, another, another cities. 
And, well, this is not in use anymore. We have, uh, within 10 years, we have a specific uh, application for software to help planners. But I think this, uh, I have to delete this image that is not more useful. It was useful during the, between 2000 and 2010. That's not useful anymore. Well, we arrive at the, at the core of the system. This is the last uh, real archives. This is where we have um, to store, the plants are stored and are available. This is the PLA, P -L -A -U for planning urban. This is the uh, adopted you can find there the adopted plants that are in force. And the plow I is for plants that are in the process of adoption. So you can, during public consultation, you can there deposit uh, suggestions or just post the plan. You can make it uh, physically at the municipality, but you can make it also uh, online here. This is what you see. And this is our, some reflections and some data. Uh, so far, there are roughly uh, 13,000 plants and related documents available. That includes these historical plants, plants that are no, no, not in force nowadays. Uh, more than 100,000 graphic documents and more than 1 million written documents. That's a mountain of information that's available. So what we have to do is to organize, to organize and make it easily, uh, but it's not easy, not easy if you have 13,000 13, documents, and it's not going to be easy, but we have to try to make it as easy as possible. That's what you see when you enter the system. In the middle is the plow for adopted plants, and to the right there is another window for uh, plants that are in the process of adoption. And um, well, there's a number of ways to find the plant you need. And of course, the more common is uh, logic is to proceed from the province to the municipality and then to the kind of plan. There are other ways to do it. But you are, uh, by default, you are guided into the general plan. For instance, in the city of Valladolid, you have a general plan. And then there are, this is the, this is the biggest city in the region, there are uh, 500 uh, regulatory plans, small, uh, smaller areas, but you are guided by default into the general, into the general plan. Um, well, last step, last step is the, uh, what we name the planning information system. This is a, a cartographic viewer with a multiple uh, planning and geographical information layers that is supposed to provide all the data you need if you are interested in a particular piece of, of territory. Access is made from the same site, now we are in the, in the left window, and this is another way, well, what it provides is a continuous view, not just of a piece of territory covered by a particular plan, but uh, benefits, we, we make a treatment of the plants to make a homogeneous view of all the plants in the territory. Let's see, it's better to see it. Now, we see this is in the south of the city of Valladolid, this is the municipality, uh, the, the, oops, there is a light. Yes. Limits of uh, municipality of. Oh. Well, it's not it's just as you see here, is, uh, several municipalities are concerned in the, in the view. It's the municipality where, where, where I live, to the south of the city of Valladolid, and you can see uh, we use the same colors and the same, uh, the same kind of, of frames for, for uh, across the municipal limits just to see the territory. So it's the, to the right. You see, you can see the legend always making the click on the on the particular piece piece of the land. Uh, and well, you go. Uh, I, I was supposed to speak just seven minutes, so, so I am going very quickly to the end, no? just to the, to the particular uh, piece of land where I, where I live. And so I am here entering the process of access to the cadaster page, to the page the web of the cadaster to see the. Uh, to any kind of particular information about that uh, particular lot of land. So uh, just about, about technology uh, is accessible nowadays is just to put more and more information layers. And if you put all the uh, information layers on the image, you see nothing. So you have always to, 
choose between what kind of information you, you want? Well, uh, just to be, to be very brief, we, I, I, I wrote this last image uh, 15 years ago, and I, I'm very happy to see that this is still working. You know, 15 years ago it was a promise, now it's a reality. So I, I feel benefits for this system. If you consider uh, what the situation we have, when, when I was 27 in 1990, well, you have more legal centrality, you have cost saving for companies and public bodies due to the availability of information, free information for everybody. Uh, well, it was important um, 15 years ago in Spain, it was very important <coughs> fighting corruption or the image of corruption and something that the urban planning was very prone to. So, to insist on transparency and clarity was, was very important for us in those, those days. And well, as a result of that, uh, there is a transparency, an index of transparency in Spain that always uh, gives us uh, 100, over 100 score because of our, of our politics, so make uh, information available. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm an archivist, and I will speak uh, from the point of view of an archivist. So I beg my pardon if I say no sense because I'm not an architect. I'm not an urbanist. Uh, the first idea, idea uh, transmit is why uh, city archives are uh, important archives in urban history. If we consider that archives are a mirror of the functional competencies and structure of the creators, an archive reflects the competence and the structure of the agency which has created it. And if we take into account that planning and managing urban space are probably the main functions of local councils, then it is easy to understand that uh, city archives, as this one, are very important archives for uh, urban history. Let's have a look to the numbers, to the number of our, of our files. I will speak not uh, <coughs> especially on planning <coughs> documents, but also in general, including control of legality items and also applications files. So, this information is, uh, come from our databases. From the 12th century to 1964, we have about or more than uh, 225,000 files. It means more than 36% of the total files we have. But this, uh, this percentage increased in the period from 1965 to present, with an average of more than 66%. So it means that we really have a lot of documents, papers, or files, or items related to urban history. And the average rate almost reached 60%. I think it's not necessary to speak more about it. Then, uh, now let's have a look. Uh, once we have checked, the meaning, the importance of the records on urban history, the general context of city archives, I will try to present the general view of the urban history documentary sources in Valladolid city archives, which can take, uh, which can be taken as a model, as a pattern of every city archives in Spain. First of all, a historical overview of the sources from the 15th century to present, and then a brief summary of the main archival functions and the phases of archival management in order to understand what do we have in municipal archives and how we would treat these documents. Background, the old regime, very, very quickly. The council minutes, this is essential, essential, uh, source, historical source of information for you. 
It is essential for the Middle Ages, for the old regime, because we have lost almost every file. But it is also very important in the contemporary times, in 19th and 20th centuries, because you will not find here any plans, any technical documents, but you will find here the decision information for every urban planning. Why? The council is the highest uh, decision organ of the council, and in the minutes of the council are kept every decision, every struggle, every deliberation, which concern to every matter of the town, the history of the town, including social context, economical context, historical context, human context, mentalities, etc. It is also important to notice that here in our archives there is a very rare and valuable document. You will see this file displayed in the exhibition. It's the Philip's second town planning after the big fire of 19. 1561. But uh, very much important at the Enlightenment period in the 18th century, with the Juntas Reales de Policía. These Juntas Reales de Policía were present in every town, every city in our country. And they were divided into four sections, which produced a lot of papers, very, very interesting for the history of urban planning. These sections were street paving and bridge repairing, street and road cleaning, including tree planting, street lighting, and damaged house, houses repairing. The 19th century is the basis of the contemporary urban planning. The most important uh, idea is that uh, due to the incredible uh, growth of our town, not only these towns, and the, the, but other towns. Valladolid had, at the beginning of the century, about 25, 30,000 uh, inhabitants, and at the end of the century, of the 19th century, reached the number of 100 inhabitants. So it was necessary to regulate, to control this urban growth. And the council need two administrative tools. The ordenanzas de ornato, which are so a regulation, and the first uh, scientific map for the town. Mm -hmm. This is the most important thing, or the most important item in 19th century. In order to control the outline, the streets and the characteristics and, the characteristics and measures that new houses and buildings should fulfill these ordenanzas de ornato eh, are very important because this is the starting point of the high importance areas of planning permission application, for instance. So, now, one part of things eh, very connected with the history of our town, the problem of the river, which should be covered by pole to avoid floods and Diseases and the change, of course, imposed by the arrival of the, of the train. 20th century is the century of planning. Urban planning, not only general planning, but also partial planning and urban development, development projects. And every kind of activities related to control private construction activities, so this is the famous planning provision applications, and also the activities related to inspection of urban de development, so the infringement proceedings, and of course municipal public works. But we are only not only interested in the papers and the documents produce, pr pr produced by public agency, but also we are interested in documents produced by personal institutions important for the history of the town. And in this case, we are in contact with the son of uh, Andres de Mesones. It was the author of the first uh, planning, general planning of the town. 
and uh, I hope that uh, in a couple of months we will uh, receive the private archives, archives, the private phones of this architect. So let's speak about our work as archivists. It is very important because in many occasions researchers come to our archives looking for uh, some specific documents without any, without any effort, without any success. I think, or I wish that uh, researchers know that uh, not every files, not every documents produced by the agents, agencies uh, is sent, are sent to our archives. And to understand this reality, it's necessary to know how do we work. Our main functions are collecting funds, preservation activities, and also provide public service. And for that uh, goals, we uh, do several tasks related to archival management, such as arrangement, appraisal, and description. Collecting funds. The most important idea is that we cannot collect every document produced by officers. Why? Sometimes we have, we don't have uh, effective legal regulations, especially in the past. Nowadays we have laws that uh, make compulsory that once the proceeding is, uh, end, is completed, should be sent to the archive. In other cases, lack of resources, human financial equipment. And in no, uh, no few occasions, bra bad practices. What is this bad practices? Civil servants tend to retain the documents, the papers, the files with them. Why? We really don't know. Probably because information is power, probably because they think that uh, papers should be better kept with them. But with the past of the time, several years, in many occasions, files are lost or destroyed. Preservation. We do a lot of things. We do preventive conservation, this is especially it's related to good installation, the papers, keep, keeping the papers in good condition. We make digitization. This is a very, very, very important uh, matter, but uh, uh, it takes a long time and involves a lot of money. And in very specific cases, we do also restoration. And we collect the uh, papers and preserve papers in order to make them available for researchers and for public. We do that task both online and on site. But speaking of uh, access, it is necessary to take into account legal issues. First of all, the confrontation among transparency and data protection, which is a very, very big problem for us. And secondly, to respect for the intellectual property rights, which is also Archival management is also important, uh, just a couple of things. Arranging funds according to a classification scheme. This scheme should reproduce the competencies, uh, uh, the structure of the, of the officers, and also the functions of the officers. Appraisal we have to take into account the values of the documents, not only the administrative and legal values, but also the historical values. And according to these values, we make the documents available or not, and we preserve the documents or we can dispose them. And a description, which consists on introducing the documents in databases. And that's all, thank you. I am going
going to talk about the, the Association of Architects of Madrid. We have a, a great, a great um, archive, and I think it's a, a very important role to the, to the history of urbanism. We have, uh, we know, uh, we, we name Documentation Center of Architecture <laughs> that integrates a library and historic service with its archive that is part of the Official Architect Institute of Madrid. This institution also has the Visa Department archive, I am not the responsible of this uh, archive, that contains, that contains uh, 55 kilometers of documents dating from 1945 until now with more than 600,000 items, among which 40,000 uh, are about planned. You should think that National History Archive has only 45 kilometers, and we have 55. The, the library of the Documentation Center of Architecture is one of the best in its discipline in Spain, and holds close to uh, 31,000 books and 110,000 uh, articles from monographs and recurrent uh, publications. It's the best web uh, about Spanish architecture and, and urbanism. Uh, the archive, I'm the responsible of the archive, in, uh, I got, uh, Alfonso Alvarez Mora was the founder of this archive <laughs> 45 years ago. <laughs> Uh, the Cairo of Historic Service is also one of the most important architectural and planning services archive, sorry, archives in Spain. This archive includes uh, documentation in the aspects of architecture, art, design, engineering, landscape, and urban planning since 1830, <coughs> our first plan, until now. It constitutes a primary source for the scientific study of this discipline. We have two open access archives in historic service. First, Madrid Architectura Guide. <coughs> Maybe it's the, it's the best uh, architectural guide in, in Spain. You can look for like, the plane, by, by the streets, by the name of the, of the building, by the offer, by the geography, <coughs> the, the dates, the topology. If you want to, to look for planning, uh, I don't know how to do it. For example, uh, services of violence. Antigua, sorry. Acueducto de Amaniel, eh, Autopista de Baraja, Central de Lavadora. We can, we can find a lot of documents in this web with pictures and original plans that we have digitized, digitized and put available in the, in the web. We have more than three. 1,500 uh, buildings, monuments, parks, and gardens, and urban areas with 100,000 documents and 7,500 uh, images <coughs> digitized are available in the, in the web. And the second, and the second is the web open access. Web Phones, phones and legacies. We have 65 phones of architects' offices. Many of them, they are like. They are alive, like Fernandez Alba, for example. And we have here 65. This is our Fondo Antiguo, the old phone. And you have the 65 architects or offices that we have. Um, we have half a million documents. 
Some of them, 44 phones, are already cataloged and inventoried, and there are uh, in them near to uh, 21,000 items and around 200 uh, million, uh, sorry, thousands documents with public access, including plans and drawings, notebooks, models, photographic material, boards, drawing tools, office furniture. So if you go to <laughs> and you look for you can see a very good oh sorry I'm not an expert <laughs> in my own way another way for research You can find more than 100 plants digitized of the Casa Huarte with the memories, with the whole documents in this project, in this item. And you can find a selection that we have done about our forms like plan de ordenación eh, and the nation plan eh, for Playa Blanca in Los Calote. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, sorry, but it has. plans too, we have the memories, we have all the documents about this model. So you can you can go by the way, by the web, and look at all the plans of the Museo de Prado, industrial design of architects, uh, houses for intellectuals and artists, uh, Egypt and, and Greece uh, travels. And it's very interesting <coughs> for the urbanism Toledo of García Palos. García Palos was an architect that was also a town planner and no, sorry. service has near to 500 documentary items from more than 10,000 documents. The archive of the historic service holds one of the most important forms about contemporary urbanism in Spain, archive of Pedro Villagor, who will be remembered as the man who modernized the discipline and created the necessary regulatory and planning tools of Spanish town planning. He also national urbanism plan, master plan of Madrid, or Villagor plan, a pioneer landscape protection plan, land law, and building code in Terania. The archive also contains documentation of other urban planners as Antonio Perpiña, Gerardo Salvador Moresum, Ramón Bernal de Luarca, Pedro Pinto, or Bernal de Fenda. 
It is also interesting then, uh, to note the phone of Jose Antonio López Candella, specialized in urban design and townscape. He's the, the most important followers of Gordon Talent in, in Spain. Since, since, 19, uh, since 2003, our website has an open access file, my architectural guide, and in uh, 2016, it was extended to the phones with a public, uh, with a public aid of the, of the Ministry of Culture. At this moment, the world started to publish online thesis, articles, and research papers produced about the archives found of the historic services. In this place, those works were depos deposited and centralized. <coughs> the aim is to create a world archive spe specialized in architectural and urbanism in order to facilitate the dissemination and exchange of technical and specialized information among the scientific community. So, the repositories or open archives in this particular scientific field will be collected in a unique digital platform with open access that holds the whole of documents about architecture and urbanism, which are today dispersed among many institutions. Thank you very much. <laughs>